be quiet. Nothing to see here. I'm just filling my AIO. Welcome to Machines and More. Today I'm reviewing the Be Quiet Pure Loop AIO. You might know Be Quiet more for their imperatively named fans and air coolers, but they have made liquid coolers in the past. This Pure Loop is a new series of AIOs, and there's a couple of neat features that make this a serious contender in the AIO liquid cooler space. If you're interested in mounting your AIO at the bottom of a the case, then this is one to take a good look at. I'll walk you through what's in the box, and then I'll show you a couple features of the cooler. We'll look at the installation, the hardware, and then we'll take a look at the thermal performance. And there is something really neat about this unit that I am dying to check out. So first off, there's the unit itself with a 240 millimeter radiator connected to the CPU block. There's no pump in this block. You get two of Be Quiet's 120 millimeter Pure Wings 2 fans. These fans are a higher RPM version of the Be Quiet's Pure Wings 2. On some of their air coolers, they use this and it tops out at 1500 RPM, but this one goes all the way up to 2000. So I'm eager to see what kind of noise level we'll get from running it at max. Here's something you don't usually see included with any AIO, a bottle of coolant. This is water and propylene glycol and it's packaged in sealed plastic in case it cracks and leaks. A user manual is especially important since refilling an AIO is going to be something new to lots of us. So this is the other 240 unit I have for comparison. This is the X53, very popular unit. Also a 240. So. The first distinguishing feature of this unit is just the fact that there's no pump in the block. If this is just a cold plate, a nickel plated cold plate, and a panel of white LEDs, right? So there's nothing underneath except this here. Um, mostly plastic, 90 degree bends here that allow the tubing to articulate to the best position. It's actually quite stiff. You know, it'll hold its position, you see that? And unlike the NZXT X53's barbs, um, those just move pretty freely. This block is elegant nickel plated copper and a lot better than many AIO cold plates that are just bare copper, it's very smooth. So you might wonder why there's a cable in the block because there's no pump in there, right? Well, it's for all the <laughs> LEDs underneath. And this cover is rotatable, so if it doesn't say be quiet this way, or I guess if it didn't say be quiet this way, you can tell it, rotate it to say be quiet this way. So you'll always remember who made your unit and you'll also remember to speak softly. If you don't want it to light up, just don't plug the cable in. The pump, interestingly, is in line. And it's unique because there are some units that have the pump in the CPU block. Some have it in the radiator. Now having a pump in the middle of the tubing makes it a lot less likely to vibrate at the motherboard end or the radiator. And positionally, this is kind of like having a separate custom loop pump, although there is no reservoir. The advantage of this design is for eliminating vibration. And I'll show you why it makes sense for vertical mounting shortly when we have the unit mounted up. Now this design also means not having to deal with infringing on Asetex pump in CPU block designs, which is always a big plus. The cable extends from the pump like such. And yeah, even though it looks like it could fit on a fan header, you're supposed to connect it to SATA power uh, via the supplied adapter because it does need a constant voltage. So this pump actually has an interesting feature. It can slide along one of the tubes this is where it's hard connected to the, to the tubing. It's not connected here though. So allows for some flexibility when mounting, especially in a small case. Moving on to this radiator, it's actually quite thin at about 27 millimeters. It's thinner than the 30 millimeter radiator on the NZXT X53. It's not quite as thin as an ultra thin custom loop rat like the XSPC TX240 that I have here, but this will allow you more clearance than most AO radiators. It's just, just a little bit thinner. The fin density is a lot lower than something like the X53, and you can see that it just looks a lot more open. I'm guessing this is designed to work well with the more airflow oriented uh, nature of the Pure Wings 2 fans. There's a screw right here that covers this port for refilling. So after we do the thermal testing, because I wanted to test its stock, 
uh, we can empty it out a little bit and see how it works to refill it. Now, other than the fans, this unit is made in Taiwan and is generally high quality. Where the plastic is used, like on the CPU block, it's quite good. And the metal is nicely finished, and this is an aluminum radiator. CPU compatibility is par for course for 2020. AM3, AM4, LGA 11.5X, LGA 1200, LGA 20XX. Installation is simple. I'm testing with the 3700X, so once the brackets are tightened to the AM4 backplate, the unit can just be screwed down directly to the brackets. It's a little annoying to have to run an extra SATA power cable to the PSU, but this is actually quite common for AIOs, and I was able to tuck the LED cable from the CPU block just around the RAM here and tuck that SATA power cable away really neatly underneath the PSU. And you'll also need to connect this pump cable to that SATA power cable because it's a single speed pump that requires a constant 12 volt source. The fan screws are also long enough to work both through something like a rad panel or a case, and they're also short enough to work without um, the thickness of a case without being too long and damaging the fins. So with the unit installed, I'll try my best to explain why this design is ideal for bottom mounting. Now due to the closed loop nature of AIO coolers, it's very difficult to fill an AIO all the way. And the manufacturer also has to leave some room for a thermal expansion of the liquid. So inevitably there's gonna be some air in the unit. And when there's air in the unit, it's gonna to migrate to the highest point in the loop. Now normally the air would migrate to a radiator, which is fine. And if it's on the top, that's where the air is gonna go. If you bottom out that radiator, it's gonna collect in the CPU block instead. If you've got a pump in here, there's a possibility it's running partially dry and you'll also get slurping noises if the air is getting mixed up with the liquid during operation. So it's a suboptimal installation. If there's air in this block, you'll also see diminished thermal performance since your coolant isn't making good contact with the cold plate. Be Quiet's design pretty much eliminates all concerns related to that. With the decoupled pump right here, it's not gonna be running in air and since you're able to fill the unit, even with liquid loss to permeation over the years, even with a partial fill on the unit, you'll still be able to ensure that the unit is mostly full and eliminate any thermal performance issues. So in a case like the NR200P, where the bottom mount is the only way to use an AIO with the tempered glass panel and a vertical GPU, this is a huge benefit. The irony is that what makes this unit so good for mounting in the bottom also makes it really, really difficult to side mount, it just based because of the motor being here. Um, if you put it in like this, and you see that tubing just can't, um, this tubing can't curve that much. If you put it like this, there's not enough give on the tubing either. The only way you can do it is if you have the tubing come over here and then you tuck everything in. But at this point, there's so much pressure on the tubing and it's pushing both at the barb end and the block end. I rebuilt the 3700X uh, test NR200 system up in the original white case uh, with a few tweaks. Uh, there's a specific comparison that this build is for and you'll see that on the channel shortly. But since I tested with the 3700X with other AIOs, it was best to use this system for testing this AIO also. For thermal testing, I first test in open air. This is the most vanilla way to test it. We can isolate the performance differences from each unit without getting into potential case and fan interactions between different designs. As is consistent with prior testing, I test at a noise normalized level about three and a half decibels above the noise floor, which is about 60% fans on this unit and also at full 100% speed, just to give you an idea of the noise and performance levels that you can expect at the very highest end of fan speed. In short, thermal performance of this unit is phenomenal. I tested the CPU thermals with a 3700X locked to an all core clock of 4.3 gigahertz on 1.25 volts. At full load like this, the chip draws about 95 watts, which is a mid high level of CPU power. It's comparable to something like a 5800X, a 3800X. Uh, with an eight minute blender render, liquid coolers will hit their e equilibrium temps and the temperature shown is the average of the last minute of thermal data. With fans at 60%, Be Quiet's unit matched the liquid freezer, both in open air and in case. 
though the LF2 was side mounted and the Be Quiet unit was bottom mounted, there was only a little difference in CPU only testing. And to say the least, I'm really surprised. Both these units eat the X53 for lunch, mainly because the X53 has such noisy stock fans that only allowed the unit to run at 40% fans. At 100%, you're not seeing too much of a benefit to thermals, just a huge noise penalty. And this suggests that the liquid is pretty much as cool as it can get at 60% fans compared to 100% fans. The P12 fans with the liquid freezer too are so quiet at 100%, it's night and day. And these fans kind of violate the brand's mantra at 100%. Now, since you can use this unit with tempered glass, I ran the same test, and since the case features vertical airflow that plays well with a radiator that can take advantage of that airflow orientation, you don't really see much of a detriment to CPU thermals with a bottom intake and tempered glass panel. As for the sound of the fans, I mixed in some fresh sound bites at various RPMs with the ones from the NZXT X53, just to give you an idea of where things fall. Now, these aren't representative of the actual noise levels, so just take a listen with a grain of salt. So this pump is single speed and although it has a very audible hum to it, it's only barely audible when case fans are running and especially unnoticeable when the case panel is closed. So I'd recommend flattening out the fan curve if you're using this unit at 60% since it doesn't really benefit much from faster fan speeds. If past 60%, there's not a real huge thermal benefit. And if you've seen the MSI Core Liquid 240 review on the channel, you'll know that I marginally recommended it for bottom mounting since otherwise the stock fans were poor. And thermal performance with the design of that particular radiator wasn't very effective. But out of the box, the Pure Loop checks off all the performance boxes. So with Thermal testing done, let's bleed out a little coolant and see if we can fill it back up. I'll take it out and let's check it out. Let's see if we can just empty a little liquid here. Okay, so I emptied out a little liquid here. Kind of see that just a little bit. Um, just to simulate what it might look like when we need to refill it years down the road. To fill it up, you'll just insert the nozzle to that fill port and you'll fill it gently. See those air bubbles that are coming out? That means there's it's still pulling air out of the radiator. So just push gently. Maybe give it a little shake, move things around. Still got air bubbles, so we're still filling. And look at that, no more air bubbles. So that means that the radiator is full enough, at least to this point where the fill port is. I think that the best way to do this would just be to turn it down flat and just remove it. And we'll just take the fill port screw and screw it back in. So with that filled up part, just dab up a little bit, we'll squeeze that so it's, it's a good idea to protect your work surface with a couple of shop towels or something like that. You don't really wanna to touch this stuff, although it's probably not the end of the world, just wash your hands afterwards. To sum it all up, I didn't expect to be this impressed with this unit. And in fact, I didn't expect this unit to be so dang close to the liquid freezer too. What Be Quiet has done here is nothing short of amazing. You have a unit that mitigates fill level concerns, you have excellent thermal performance, 
pretty quiet uh, fans with a pleasing noise uh, pattern. The build quality and hardware is high quality, nicely finished coal plate, and there's a huge nod to the consumer and to the longevity unit by providing a bottle of this coolant here. Now, if there's one thing that I can't test as a reviewer of this AIO right now, it's the longevity of the unit. It is warranted for three years, which is a bit on the shorter side, longer than the liquid freezer too, but shorter than the six that NZXT gives. The decoupled pump does make certain mounting configurations tricky, especially in SFF. So if you're looking to side mount in SFF, this basically limits how the tubing can uh, can run. And it's really, t you don't want to put too much of a bend on it, right? So I, it's not the best unit for that. If I could be nitpicky and give a recommendation for Be Quiet, that would be to improve this stubby little fan splitter and because it's more of an inconvenience. When it's this short, it has a tendency to stick out from the motherboard header uh, rather than lie flat. So I would extend it a little bit and just have the fan cables connect to it farther away from the header just for better cable management. I would also look into a way for the pump to run off of the fan header, much like how Arctic does it by having a pump that responds to the PWM signal given to the fans. This would eliminate a SATA power cable at the PSU. If your case can fit this decoupled pump, I would highly recommend this unit. I would also highly recommend this one for bottom mounting. In fact, I would go as far to say that if you want to run an AIO with a tempered glass panel in the NR200P, you absolutely need to get this unit. I've left a few product links down below, so please check them out and please consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow. A big thank you for watching today and I'll see you again soon.